Hello and welcome to another Filter Grade tutorial. My name is Leighton. In this video, we're going to be going through the basics of color grading in DaVinci Resolve, as well as my general workflow whenever I color grade my videos. If you don't already have DaVinci Resolve, I would highly recommend getting it. You can download it for free, and it's a fantastic all-around editing app that specializes in coloring. Resolve has become the industry standard in post-production coloring, but it's easy enough that anyone can navigate through its windows and modules to create beautifully graded videos. So I've already imported my clips here into the media pool. So let's go ahead and get into the edit tab down here. Click that, and this will take you to the editing tab. So Resolve actually has a really good editing software that most people overlook. It's a great program if you're trying to make a small edit or something for Instagram maybe. That's what I mainly use it for. The editing layout and hotkeys are similar to Final Cut Pro, so it'll be easier if you come from that into Resolve as opposed to Premiere, but it's a fairly simple editing program that you can understand how it works in just a matter of minutes. So I've already got my clips aligned here in a timeline. So this isn't really a project that I'm working on, but it's just a collection of clips that are very different in color and temperature and overall look, just so I can show you how to color different types of clips from different settings. So I'm not going to go over too much of how to edit in here. It's pretty straightforward. This color tab here is what we're going to look for. Uh, you can see all my clips are lined up here that I can just click through, check the histogram, check the waveform curves. If this doesn't pop up for you, all you have to do is click clips in the top and it brings them back up. Same with timeline, if you'd like to see a, a different layout and that shows the length of your clips. I like to just leave this clips tab open. Uh, sometimes I'll get rid of it completely just so I can get a bigger screen and I can see what exactly I'm working on. If you have a second screen that you edit with, I would highly recommend putting this display on the other screen just so you can maximize your workspace here as sometimes these different options and different windows can make the interface feel crowded. So this is what the color tab looks like when you initially go into it. So up here you have your nodes, which is similar to layers in Photoshop. It allows you to make adjustments on a separate layer that's non-destructive so that you can turn on and off different adjustments just to see how they look. And if you make a mistake, you can just get rid of a single node as opposed to all your adjustments that you've made in total. It makes for a lot easier and quicker color grading if you don't have to keep hitting undo, 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 getting rid of something that you probably didn't want to, but you had to because you didn't do it on a separate node. So down here you got your standard curves adjustment. You can adjust the highlights, the shadows, the midtones. get a standard contrast curve going here. I like the darkest parts of my video to be dark and the brightest parts of my video to be bright. So as you can see here in the waveform scopes, this is the view I like to use. You can use parade and vector scope histogram, but I find that waveform is good for me that I can see everything at once and all the information is right there for me. So I tend not to bring any colors lower than zero but I do want a nice dark darks and nice bright brights, but not too bright that you're losing some information and detail in the highlights and shadows. So that's just a standard contrast curve. In here you have the hue v hue, which changes the colors, changes how you see reds, how you see greens. You can pinpoint the colors by just clicking yellow, green. It allows for specific color adjustments just in the greens or the reds, the yellows. So as you can see, I'm kind of just changing the hue of the greens here making it a little bit more bright, almost artificial looking. So you can mess around with that for a while. Keep clicking on and on, you can find the hue saturation. So if you go down, it limits the saturation. If you go up, it saturates a little bit more. And you can pinpoint it again just by adding points on this line here. Next one, hue versus luminosity. So it changes the brightness of the colors. As you see, if I raise the whole line up, the whole scene looks brighter. If you want to pinpoint a certain color, Turn the greens up, turn everything else down. Nice bright greens. This is the luminosity saturation, so this can just change brightness and saturation of the colors in both the highlights and the shadows. So if you want a nice bright saturated highlights, maybe you want some dark desaturated shadows and midtones, just bring it down like this. It's sort of like a contrast curve, but for color and brightness. Finally, you have your saturation saturation, which changes the saturation only in the highlights, shadows, midtones. So again, you can just mess around with this. It's good to have a plan before you go into actually grading your footage. That way it's a lot quicker and you know what you're looking for. So up here you have a whole bunch of options. I like to use the color wheels. I just find it's easier to work with and it's, it's a good visual aid. So let's get rid of the clips here. We'll move on to the next clip. Minimize that so we can see this a little bit better. So as you can see in your waveform, you got a little bit of peaking here in the highlights. So I'm going to go ahead and go to gain, which is highlights, and I'm going to bring this down just by clicking here and dragging to the left. I just want that down, not so it's peaking. And same with the shadows, which is lift here. You can bring this down just by scrolling on this wheel here. 
a little bit more contrast in this video because it's kind of an overcast day meaning that there's not a lot of shadows to begin with so I'm gonna try to darken it a little bit more uh, gamma that's just a mid-tone so you can brighten that up if you like I'm just gonna add a little bit here not too much just so I can get some some extra luminance out of that offset is the overall exposure adjustments and color adjustments if you want to adjust the white balance or give your video a certain kind of color cast you can just click the middle button here and drag it this is obviously extreme but showing you what happens when you go into different colors of the wheel this is more of a cinematic look if you pull it down into the kind of the teal blue area I'm just gonna go ahead and bring it up just to warm it up a bit because it feels like a, a very fall warm scene and you can do that with all the gamma gain lift if you want some cold shadows which generally I like to do not too much just bring that down towards the blues here I like to leave the gamma gain maybe just a bit to the yellows just to give that feel of sunlight. So down here it's easily missed but these are very important controls here. You've got contrast, pivot, saturation, hue, uh, luminosity mix. These adjustments here are standard in most color correction or photo editing softwares. So you've got your standard contrast here, uh, saturation, these are both very common. Pivot, uh, I find this works sometimes but you really got to go to extremes. Um, it's sort of like clarity in Lightroom where it doesn't necessarily pinpoint the brightest brights and the darkest darks of your video clip but kind of the in-between mid-tones, the gray area. Hue is a similar to what we used before in the curves. So this can change the color of the colors, giving it yellow, maybe a, a more red or pink look or a green in the opposite direction. You can make it look like some crazy magical tree here if you just mess with it enough. And if you hit the 2 button here, this takes you to the second round of adjustments. If you want to specifically target the color temperature, there's a temp button right here. You can click for colder, warmer, I think that's good right around there. I already kind of gave it a little bit of offset. The tint here is common again with most photo editing and video editing coloring software. Um, either green or pink. Sometimes certain lenses or cameras have a, a green or pink color cast to it depending on the lighting you're working with as well. Color boost is also a powerful tool I like to use. It just kind of it's not necessarily saturation, but it's more similar to vibrance in Lightroom. So I'll give that a little bit of a boost. The shadows here is just more accurate as opposed to using lift. Uh, you can just target the shadows a lot better, darken them up. So I usually start off with the curves, get my exposure right, then I'll go to the color wheels. Sometimes I'll go to the RGB mixer. This allows for more precise adjustments on the RGB channels, which you can also edit in curves. What's cool about Resolve is it has multiple editing windows where you can almost do the same things, but these different windows can access specific colors or tones, gives a more accurate readout, more accurate manipulations for certain colors. If you specifically want to adjust one shade or tone in the video, there's so many options and so many ways you can go about doing it. So in here, you can adjust your red output, green output, blue output, it's all here. Um, if you want a little bit more green in the reds, a little less red in the reds, a little more blue in the green, a little bit more blue in the blue, kind of give it a turquoise kind of feel. Take away a bit of red in the uh, greens here. This just takes away the saturation from the green grass, really exaggerates the pink in the tree here. The one I've done in these last two clips is I've just added my adjustments to the single node which is not really the best way of doing it, but if I'm trying to go fast or I'm making a small edit for either Instagram or maybe like a one minute YouTube clip where I'm not too picky in how I'm coloring and I just want to rip through it as fast as possible, I'll generally go about doing it this way. But I would recommend if you're doing a, a bigger project or you just want to be more precise in your colors, all you have to do is right click, add node, add serial, and you've got a second node here that you can add adjustments to. We'll go back into the curves adjustment window. From here we can adjust exposure so if I bring everything up it's only affects this node here so if maybe I don't like what I've just done all I have to do I can hit reset node grade and that will take me back to zero and leaves whatever adjustments I've already done this is definitely the best way of doing it if you're working on a large scale project or you just want to be very specific with how you're editing so let's get into a, a different scene here I'll put clips down here just so I can see my display better if we go to the next clip here, it's actually the same video, but just split in the edit. So in these scenarios where there is two separate clips, part of one video, I want to make sure that these two here are similarly color graded. So what I'll do, I'll put the clips down. I'm going to add another node by right clicking the node, add node, add serial, and I'm going to add all my adjustments to this one here. So we're going to go into the color wheels here. 
I'm just gonna brighten the whole scene as you can see here in my waveform there's not a lot of highlights going on so I'm gonna use the offset and kind of boost the exposure all around but go to the shadows specifically in the lift here and bring those down just so I can get a nice dark hand all this stuff down here is good I might add a little bit of color just so that fire when it does pop up really really sticks out so you go in the window tab this is where you can add a vignette effect or a radial filter like in Lightroom all you have to do is click this little circle here and it adds a circle window or you can add a square if you want to edit a certain area. I'm just going to get rid of that square by clicking the square again. And from here you can change the size, you can adjust what the feather is doing, maybe if you want a nice even dispersion of light. So you look over the node here, you can see what this filter has done. All around the outside is all gray and not being affected. From here we can go over back into curves or color wheel. I like to go back into color wheel, boost the highlights so that when the snow does come into focus, it does pop because it's highlight. So I'm going to increase the contrast just so that this helps bring the focus of the viewer into the hand, which I want the center focus point to be. This means that around the outside it won't be as contrasty. It'll kind of have a more soft, um, especially with the lens I've used here, it's a little bit more blurry on the outside. I'm not going to adjust too much of the color in this video clip here because it's mostly black and white. So if you go back just to the right of windows, there is a tracker tab. So this allows you to track an object. So if you brighten someone's face, you can select their face and it will track it and continue that adjustment just on their face, not on the rest of the clip. But for the purpose of this video clip here, my hand isn't really moving and I do want the center point to be the focus no matter what. And because I'm gonna be copying this to the next clip, I don't want a moving object to be searching for something that's not really there in the second clip. So as I mentioned before, I want to add the same color corrections on this video clip to the video clip after it because they're from the same overall video. All you have to do is make sure that this node that you've corrected is selected, hit Command C, go to your next clip, right click, add node, add serial, make sure this one's clicked, Command V, and that will add your adjustment that you just added in this clip here to this clip here. So if you play it out the slow-mo clip here, you can see color grading here transfers over to this next clip maintaining the contrast in the center once the focus comes around kind of a softer outside so let's show one more clip here just some last minute adjustments so a lot of these different adjustments and tabs you probably won't have to use if you already know what color match and camera raw settings are odds are you know how to use these tabs so for this last one let's go into the color wheels it's gonna add a another node here add serial except for this one, we're gonna actually add a LUT. Right click, go down to 3D LUT. Gonna go down to Kino LUT R709 because this is a Rec 709 file. This is not shot in a log or raw video format. Go to my exposure variations. Let's brighten it up a bit. Uh, let's just warm it up just a tad, see what it does. Okay, so this LUT is a preset color profile that just speeds up my entire workflow uh, I almost always use LUTs unless I'm doing a very minor adjustment where I want to really be specific with what I'm trying to capture with these colors. So just by adding this LUT, instantly the shadows got a nice teal blue hue to them. Work the foreground has a little bit of a more warmer feel. Gives this video a nice cinematic look, but I'm not really satisfied with how dark it is. And if you look down here at my waveform, it's, there really isn't anything bright in this video. So I'm just going to increase the entire offset. Bring the exposure up everywhere. Go back down to the lift so I can just keep the nice dark parts of the video dark. Uh, I won't mess around with the color casting here just because the LUT has already done that for me and I'm pretty impressed with what it's done. I might go add a little bit more saturation, a bit more contrast for more of a dramatic feel. Hit the number two, color temperature's fine, tint. It's got a bit of a green tint, but I like what it's doing in this video here. There really isn't a whole lot of color here, so I won't bother color boosting. Shadows, just more specifically pinpointing the dark parts. I'm just gonna decrease that a bit, adding more of a darker feel. So there you have it. I've shown just very different types of clips here. There are some clips here that I'm just gonna throw a quick LUT on just to save time and just to show how to do it. This is all shot in Rec. 709, so I'm just gonna go bright let's make it warm it's a nice seascape some really nice tones there and again here add note add serial 
3D LUT. Now you can download LUTs online if you go to filtergrade.com. That's where I get most of my LUTs. I like to create more of a cinematic feel in all my videos. It increases the drama in the video and will give the whole film kind of a more of a professional feel even though it was just me and not necessarily a large film crew. So I'm just going to go down here. Let's, let's make this one cool just to show what it can do. Right away, it's just drastically changed the look of my video. It would probably would have taken me maybe 20 minutes to recreate. Just getting into all the different tabs, editing the colors by themselves, hue, saturation, luminosity, everything. So LUTs are just great time savers. It's good if you have an idea of what kind of a look you want to give your footage that way you can just find the lot you want and within a couple clicks you've got great footage so that just takes it to a whole other level there whenever you add a color adjustment you have these little uh, kind of a rainbow squares around each numbered clip that shows you which ones you corrected so if you go through all of them are colorized and edited once you're satisfied with the coloring you just go down to the deliver so in the deliver tab you can choose where you're going to export this to whether it's a hard drive or external drive you can also quick export which is great if you want to put it right to youtube or if you would like to put it back into one of your editing softwares you use if you want to take it back to final cut or premiere to add some last minute adjustments maybe some audio touch-ups some text what i usually tend to do all you have to do is go through the settings here render everything you can change the codec format uh, i like to use apple ProRes 422 it's just the best for me, especially on a Mac. Um, resolution, just make sure you've got the right resolution that you're looking for. Frame rate, you can go down to advanced settings, but most of the time you don't need to mess with this. Once you hit start render, your video will render and export wherever you decided to put it. There you have it. Those are the basics of color grading in DaVinci Resolve and what I tend to do in my workflow for how I color my video. And as always, for the best Photoshop actions, Lightroom presets, and video LUTs, check out filtergrade.com.